What's happening guys, it's Shane here. So I've gotten a ton of requests to do a video where I go over some of the top engineering degrees and I rank them, you know, which ones I think are the best, which ones I think are not as good. And so here we are and you know, I've done a ton of research on this and studies have shown that the more engaged you are, the more you're gonna get out of the video. So make sure to smash that like button because it helps with the engagement rate and I really appreciate it. This is how you smash a like button. But with that being said, we are going to jump right in with number 10 on the list, which is going to be environmental engineering. And basically this is where you use engineering principles to develop solutions to environmental problems. Now they make about $87,000 a year or so, which is around number seven on the list. So it's on the lower side out of all of them. And they also have an average growth over the next 10 years expected to be around 5%, which again, it's kind of okay. The average for all jobs is around four to 6%. And one thing you'll notice about engineering degrees is sometimes they're on the lower side of average in terms of the job outlook in the next 10 years. And then another thing about this, which isn't as good is there's only about 55,000 jobs available. That's kind of on the lower side when it comes to engineering. So because of the fact that, you know, it has all those things kind of going against it, it's either average or below average and all the significant metrics. That's why it comes in at number 10 on the list. But overall, if you compare it to jobs as a whole, this is still a very solid option. Next on the list is going to be marine engineering coming in at number nine. And this one kind of sounds like exactly what it is. You're going to be working on engineering related things that have to do with water. What for? So boats, for instance, submarines, things along those lines. Now, when you first look at the statistics for marine engineering, it looks extremely impressive. You got $92,000 a year for the average salary, which is pretty good. You got a 9% future growth prediction, which is also really good. I think that's actually the best on the entire list. But the problem with this is it's very limited. There's only about 11,700 jobs total, and that's actually dead last on the list. So you might have that 9% growth rate, but 9% of only 11,000 isn't that great. Whereas, you know, with some of the other ones, you might only have 5% expected growth rate, but maybe there's 300,000 jobs. So that's actually a lot of jobs overall. I get a summer job. Another thing about this particular degree is you're probably going to have to move somewhere in order to get a really good job. And then it's not going to be as flexible as some of the other ones on the list where let's say you don't want to work in this particular career field, you can easily just transition into a different one. Your skills are coveted in a bunch of different fields. This one isn't exactly like that. It would probably be quite difficult to transition. And that is why this one comes in at number nine on the list and not better. Number eight on the list is going to be civil engineering. And this one is all about using engineering principles to you know, develop different infrastructures or buildings and that sort of thing. And the great thing about this one is there is kind of a level of oversight on this one, meaning if you're more of a hands-on person, this might be one of the better degrees for you to get into when it comes to engineering because you're kind of on site and you're where the action is. This one is a, one of the lower paid ones on the list. It's only around 86,000 a year or so, which is not good. It's kind of like average or lower. Now this is definitely one of the lower paid on the list. In fact, I think it comes in at dead last. You only get paid an average of about $86,000 a year. However, there is a ton of job openings, about 326,000 right now, and it's expected to grow about 6% in the next 10 years. So it's looking pretty good into the future. That's on the higher side of average. And it's actually one of the better numbers uh, when you're comparing them against other engineering degrees. Number seven on the list is gonna be a little bit controversial probably because this is actually the most popular engineering degree and that's going to be mechanical engineering. Now mechanical engineering is one of the lower paid on the list. It's around $87,000 a year or so, which comes in at I think the third to last on the list. It has an average growth of about 4%, which I'd say is around average for this particular list. And overall, it's on the lower side of average. However, there is a ton of job openings for mechanical engineers, about 312,000 right now. And so that's actually not too bad in terms of the demand now and also the demand 
going into the future. Now, like I mentioned before, this is the most popular engineering degree. And for that reason, there's also going to be more competition than some of the other ones. But with that being said, mechanical engineers are sort of like a jack of all trades. And that means that even if you don't end up working as a mechanical engineer, there's a really good chance that you could get hired doing something else that's in the technology field or something that's not necessarily related to mechanical engineering, but the skills that you learn, you know, studying mechanical engineering transfer over. So there's honestly a lot of X factors with this one. And, you know, I'm sure that some people are going to argue this one should be higher on the list. And I totally respect your arguments. But in terms of the things that we can actually measure, it's around number seven on the list. Next one on the list coming in at number six is going to be industrial engineering. And basically what they do in a nutshell, it's actually kind of complicated, but they streamline different processes for businesses that require either their software or mechanical means in order to create products. So for instance, car companies would hire industrial engineers to design and streamline a process of creating a car so that the finished product is not only efficiently made, but it's also really good. So in terms of pay, this one is the second worst on the list at about $87,000 a year. However, there are a ton of job openings now, about 284,000, and there's gonna be even more in the future at about 8%. And the 8% is the second best on the list. So there's basically a ton of opportunity in the future for this one. And it really does make sense. I mean, everything in terms of business is getting streamlined. Everybody is focused on AI, streamlining processes, and that is exactly what industrial engineers help with. So it doesn't quite pay as well as a lot of the others on the list. However, there's so much demand and the other stats look so good for it. And I really just see in the future, just if you use kind of common sense, I see this one being extremely coveted by businesses as we go into the age of automation. And so for that reason, I put them at number six. So number five on the list is going to be chemical engineering. And basically what they do is they use the principles of chemistry as well as you know engineering, physics, biology, even mathematics in order to improve or create different products related to food or drugs or fuel, something along those lines. So in terms of the median pay, it's actually extremely good at about $104,900 a year. That comes in at, I believe, number three or number four on the list. It's kind of tied for number three, I believe. And there's also a 6% average growth, which is on the higher side on the list. Again, four to 6% is normal, so it's on the higher side of normal overall, but for this particular list, that's actually pretty good. However, the one really bad thing about this one, and it's the reason why it's not better ranked on this list, is there's only about 33,000 job openings, which is one of the lowest out of all of them. Still, chemistry as a whole, and chemical engineering specifically, in my opinion, is really starting to make a comeback in terms of skills that are extremely valued by different companies. And so I do see this one kind of becoming even a little bit more valuable in the future. It's also a relatively flexible degree, which was somewhat surprising to me. I kind of just pictured it as being one of those things where you can only get a certain amount of jobs, but there's actually quite a few opportunities out there for chemical engineers. So if you decide to not go into, you know, specifically chemical engineering, there are a lot of options out there for you. You could go into the, you know, natural gas industry, oil, those sorts of things. But with that being said, you might have to move somewhere in order to have the best opportunities and get the best career options. And that does kind of suck because maybe there's a particular city that you want to live in. Maybe your family lives there. And with this particular career, you might end up having to move away. And it's actually very similar to number four on the list, which is petroleum engineering. Now you might be surprised that I put them as number four because this one has the highest salary by a mile. It comes in at number one easily at $137,000 a year. That is just totally insane for a four year degree. You get out and you're already making like $137,000 a year just with a four year undergraduate degree. That's, that's insane. I think that's actually the best out of any undergraduate degree. So it wins in that one particular category, but unfortunately every other category, it's gonna be below average or average at best. So for instance, there's only about 33,500 jobs available right now, and it's only expected to grow at about 3% over the next 10 years. Neither of those are very good. They're towards the bottom of the list. 
And on top of that, this is another one of those degrees that's not very flexible. Your skill set won't necessarily translate as easily into a different industry. That doesn't mean you can't move into a different industry. It's just not going to be as easy or seamless as something like mechanical engineering, for instance. And this is also another one where you will likely have to move somewhere in order to have the best opportunities. There's a good chance that you won't be able to get a job in your favorite city or your hometown and you'll have to move somewhere where all the jobs are available and this might be a small town in Texas that's right next to an oil field or it might even be like an oil rig that's out in the middle of the ocean and unfortunately those are going to be your options but if you're okay with those sorts of things then you could even say that this might be number one or number two on the list but overall I kind of think that the average person is not going to enjoy that and that's why I put it as number four and this one is actually extremely similar to number three on the list, which is aerospace engineering. Now again, it has a ridiculously high pay, which is about $115,000 a year, which I believe comes in at number two on the list. There's about 67,000 jobs available right now, which is average to below average. And then it's only expected to grow about 2%, which is definitely below average. And I think that's actually one of the lower ones on the list. And this is really one of those majors where it's kind of feast or famine. You know, if we're in a wartime situation, for instance, they're probably gonna need a ton of aerospace engineers. But if we're not, you might not need as many. So so there's a bunch of different factors that influence you know how many aerospace engineers you need and at this particular time we're kind of in the famine part of the feast or famine and it basically has all of the same issues that petroleum engineering has where you're probably not going to find a job in your hometown or your favorite place to live you're going to have to move somewhere probably not quite as bad as petroleum engineering but you'll likely have to move to a different place in order to get the best opportunities and it's also not going to be very flexible probably again slightly more flexible than petroleum engineering but it's not nearly as flexible as something like mechanical or electrical still this is a very good option and that's why it comes in so high on the list speaking of electrical engineering number two on the list is going to be electrical engineering and there's a reason why this is so high on the list because it's just really good in pretty much every single category the median pay is nearly a hundred thousand dollars a year at about ninety nine thousand there are 330,000 job openings, which is just crazy. It does have a slow growth average at about 2%, but when you have 330,000 job openings, 2% of 330,000 is still a good amount of job openings. And this is another one of those degrees that's extremely flexible, not only within the electrical engineering kind of industry, but you can also get jobs that are outside of that industry relatively easily. You probably won't have to move anywhere to find a job. You can live in your ideal city and still get a really good job. And I kind of think of this one sort of just practically speaking, we're not gonna stop using electrical devices anytime in the near future. So I see this one having demand not only just the next 10 years, but the next 20, 30, 40 years and beyond. Speaking of a lot of demand, number one on the list is going going to be computer engineers. Computer engineering is going to be an amazing choice for you and you can probably guess basically what they do. It's all to do with computers and hardware and they make about $114,500 a year uh, median pay which is just insane for a four-year degree. I think that comes in at number three on the list right behind aerospace but just by a smidge. There's about 64,400 jobs available which is pretty average. However, it does have a six percent expected growth rate which is one of the higher ones on the list but to me what really sets this one apart besides from its really good stats is its practicality what sets it apart is the fact that it does overlap with computer science even though you're more focused on hardware than software you still have to have a really good understanding of the software side of things and as we're entering the age of automation and streamlining these sorts of skills are going to become extremely valuable there are going to be tons tons of opportunities within the next 20 years. And let's say you don't wanna be a computer engineer. This is a really good one to transition into computer science. 
you'd be able to bring a perspective into computer science that a lot of tech companies would probably really want to have on their team. So the fact that you can transition into probably the number one industry in the world, which is tech, and it would be something that a lot of people would love to hire you for, means this one comes in at number one on the list. But overall, all of these are really good options uh, in terms of getting employed, and really you should just go for the one that is the best fit for you personally. So you wanna think about what you're good at, obviously, but you also wanna think about what you're passionate about and what would be the best option for you to, you know, do a, an entire career from. And there's also a lot of X factors and things that we may not be able to predict that could completely change the outcome of these rankings. And then another thing is if you happen to live in a city, for instance, that has a bunch of petroleum engineering jobs and that's your hometown, that's the place you wanna live, maybe that would be something that would make it number one on the list for you. So there's a lot of different things to consider. And of course, you should always do your research, talk to people who are already doing the jobs, and just make sure you choose the best option for you. Make sure to check out my videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the little notification bell, and then comment down below. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.